this is David Bedin. I'm a reporter and also a social worker. I've been in Israel for 45 years. I'll be, I, I came on my 20th birthday almost 45 years ago. been observing the situation in the last 27 years. I've been in the world of, of uh, media. And uh, what that means is I go behind the scenes to find out what's going on, and I sell news articles, items, features to all major media. And sometimes we're ahead of our times. Now, let's start out with something cute. What's the difference between a genius and a crackpot? A genius is a step ahead of his time. A crackpot is two steps ahead of his time. So you'll decide which I am when I'm speaking with you today. Now, what's happening right now, on the Lebanese border, there are 100,000 missiles aimed at Israel. It is a indeed a security challenge to the people and state of Israel. And there's no question about it that Israel was, when the, when the attacks come, we've now learned from the Israel defense establishment that Israel will fire back not only in the way it did in the last three uh, rounds of conflict, but actually fire to get rid of the villages where these thousands of missiles have been embedded. Now, that's good military strategy, and will help Israel, will help our security here. However, the implications for Jews abroad are very serious, because what the other side has planned, both in Gaza, where we've been filming the civilians in Gaza, especially children, especially children military training, and in, in Lebanon, where, again, 100,000 missiles are embedded in the, in the uh, villages. What that means is we're going to kill lots and lots of civilians, not because we want to, because they've been placed there to die. Now, from a military point of view, so what? But from a point of view of how that's going to affect Jews around the world, there is a new anti-Semitic system that's been put in place by the PLO and the Palestinian Authority in coordination with the... Uh, with the um, Arab League, and you'll see in every place possible, sometimes it's called BDS, sometimes it's called Apartheid, the Apartheid Week, and all kinds of names. But the bottom line is, to blame Jews for anything going on here, which seems like an indiscretion. And most Jews, as you may know, are not so informed of the details of what's going on or the background of what's going on, what's going on. but they'll know the bottom line, that if Israel is attacked, and if Israel does kill off thousands of civilians in response, not because we want to, but that will have an effect on Jews abroad. And just be prepared for a, a humongous anti-Semitic onslaught, because that's what the other side has been planning for quite a while. Uh, there are centers, Muslim centers around the world, which thanks to the internet, are receiving material from here on a daily basis, in instant, in, in instant pictures and I'll just have to say that when you see instant pictures of people dying, it has an effect. In Gaza, our, our uh, staff, we have a staff of, of Arab journalists who, have, who work with, uh, with our research, our Jewish researchers, and they've filmed the Arab kids in training in Gaza. 17,000 children who are going through military training uh, so that when they, they, they will be basically on the front lines in the next uh, round, the round of fighting. And what's important to know is that these children, uh, they all are intending to die in an onslaught from Gaza, and their, their motivation in dying, besides the Islamic motivation, is the fact that they, what's been drummed into their heads is that, they, if they, is that the villages inside Israel, the cities inside Israel, their Sheva, Ashkelon, Ashdod, you name it, are all, from their point of view, Arab villages where their grandparents and great-grandparents came from. Not only that they came from them, but their they're living in UNRWA camps, United Nations Relief and Work, Work Agency camps since 1948. The education is that the Jews came and raped your grandmothers, killed your grandfathers, and took these cities. These children are very well, well motivated to die, to fight, and we're going to see lots of them die on the front if they get their, their, their desire. And that will have, again, Israel will defeat them, but the price of victory will be a Pyrrhic victory. But that's something that there's no question about it. You know, over the centuries, the image of children, of Jews killing, killing non-Jewish children to achieve their purposes, and a number of the, by the way, a number of the, believe it or not, Jewish anarchist groups have been spreading the rumor that Jews in Judea, Samaria, have been poisoning the wells of Arabs. And that's all part of the story. Try to, to try to 
basically exacerbate the situation of Jews abroad, to anger them and to um, frighten them also, to, to be here in Israel and not have a belief in Hashem, believe in God, is very, very difficult because we see the miracles. I'll never forget the first few days of the Yom Kippur War and when we were surrounded in all fronts and there was a surprise attack and, you know, for the U.S. to push back uh, as the surprise attack in Pearl Harbor took four years, for the Soviets to push back the, the, the surprise attack from, uh, from the, the Nazis took four years. Here it took three weeks. And there are so many stories of, of the Arab army stopping in their stead and not moving. Or two of my friends who were on an on anti-aircraft battery near Haifa, and two planes came through. And as they were coming through, they shot in the air, they missed them, and looked like they were going to hit the oil refineries. And what happened? <laughs> one, the, the, the helium from the oil refineries hit one of the planes, and the other plane went around and, and went back. These guys, they could have, had they let their loose their, their bombs on the, on the oil refineries in Haifa, they would have, wouldn't have been a Haifa. And that's the, those kind of stories happening all the time, and there was no natural way that in 18 days, not even through, it was 18 days, Israel was able to reverse that, the surprise attacks on the Golan and in the, um, and in the Sinai. Near where my interviewer today is living, uh, I had the opportunity to interview um, eight tank commanders who fought off 125 Syrian tanks. It's not something to be believed, not something to understand. I think the most important thing is people who are aware, not only of the mystical issues of coming to Israel, but of the practical issues of what's going on right now. If you can sell property and come over here, the sooner you do so, the better. Because when, when, the, uh, when the push comes to shove, many people will be forced out of there. And right now, LL planes can handle five, ten thousand people at a time. And there is someone who has a ship, um, actually a Christian who has a ship, uh, that bring that, that carts people to and fro four thousand people at a time. Most people won't be able to make it over here. And the sooner you can, while things are seemingly okay, the better. Uh, even if it's not easy, even if there's a loss involved in the short term, understand you have an opportunity right now to come to Israel and what I can say is the other side is not going to let people come on their own in the very, very near future. And uh, you want to read more insights into the news, look at our website, israelbehindthenews.com, use the search engine for any subject, and I think that the, 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 the viewers of this program will have some eye-opening experiences.